We've talked a lot about similarities between humans and chimpanzees, but what about the difference? There is a huge difference. You won't get a chimpanzee standing delivering a lecture. You won't get a theater like this. You won't get microphones. Chimpanzees are much, much, much more intelligent than we ever used to think. They can learn 400 or more of the signs of American Sign Language, ASL. There are chimpanzees in Japan who've learned to do amazing things with computers. They have extraordinary memories. But you can't compare even the brightest of these chimpanzees with the kind of brain that designed a rocket that went hundreds of miles into space, landed on the red planet Mars, outcrawled a little robot, and began crawling around the surface of the red planet, taking photographs for scientists on Earth to look at. So how is it possible that the creature, which is the most intellectual that's ever walked on the planet, surely we agree to that, how is it possible that we're destroying our only home? And the pictures from Mars make it very clear that is not a good alternative to planet Earth. <laughs> We've got this one. And when the young people say to me, well, it, there's nothing we can do about it, it's too late, that's where I don't agree. And I know I could be wrong. This could be wishful thinking. You will have, and I'm sure have had, uh, biologists, scientists standing at this very spot and saying that we're on a downward trajectory and it's too late to make meaningful change. Well, I just believe there's a window. And if we carry on with business as usual, it will be too late. And I feel, as I travel around the world, a growing awareness. People are understanding a lot more now about climate change and things like this. People are talking about it. People are beginning to understand that the shortage of water is something to do uh, with us, maybe with our agricultural systems. But it's not, by and large, leading to change in behavior. And that's the problem. And I think one reason why people are sort of apathetic is you hear so often, think globally, act locally. I say that's wrong, because if you start thinking globally of all the problems I just mentioned, you honestly don't have the energy or the will to do anything about it, because you feel helpless and hopeless. If you twist it around, if you say, OK, here I am in my community. There's a very polluted river. Let's do something about it. And you've had many good examples of that in this uh, whole New York state. Let's do something about it. Let's get together. Let's talk to the polluters. Let's talk to the legislators. Let's get out and clean the, the, the garbage. And rivers can be cleaned. And if you realize that all around the world there are people acting in this sort of way, then you begin to have hope.